Welcome to Science Fiction on the Barroom Network. This is our very first episode. My name is Salim Sutterwala, and I'm joined by my friend and co-host, Carl Eames. Carl, how's it going, man? Great. Happy to be here. You know, getting into the show itself and why, you know, our passion behind science, fi- uh, science fiction movies and comic book movies and comics and reading like that, I thought, you know, it would be, be a good shot, good idea to kind of introduce ourselves as uh what caught us into like comic books, science fiction movies and stuff like that growing up. Um, I'll let you start, Carl. I mean, you can introduce yeah. yourself and then you can let us know like your top three movies that you like in your, like as far as the science fiction genre is concerned. Yeah. So yeah, go, uh, I'm Carl Ames, go by Ninja Turtle online. That's uh, on Twitter, Instagram, so on. Um, pretty much been a nerd all my life. I, uh, I can remember my my earliest days of like I used to live in the suburbs and we we're from Chicago, uh, live in the suburbs and we would go to church in Chicago. Still, it was like a fifty mile trip, and my mom wanted me to have something to do like while we're in the car. It's like an hour long ride, so we used to go to Walmart. There's also a local comic book store uh, in in my area, but we would go to Walmart and she would just say, "Hey, you know." Why don't you try some comic books? I mean, it's it's weird that it came from her. It was her suggestion, but uh, Walmart had like the little spinny rack back then. And my first comic books were X Men, Spider Man, and Sonic the Hedgehog. Surprisingly, wish I kept that in good condition. That was a uh, that was that's a lot of money. Um, but um, yeah, just read those all the time and uh, wore those out, and uh, just became super into comics and course back in the day watching all sorts of science fiction and uh you know a lot of uh, action movies too like one of my i was just thinking about it today how much i miss watching um steven seagal and john claude van damme the stuff like that uh back in the day used to wa- watch those all the time but uh yeah those those are my roots I've been playing video games i'm a big gamer too um i watch a lot of anime nowadays i'm wearing uh my hair academia shirts right now that's big anime and uh which is actually very adjac- adjacent to comic books to superhero comic books if you don't know anything about my hero academia um but yeah so as far as my favorite movies go just uh quickly like my number one is black panther like that's just not mcu number one and also just favorite movie period is black panther um it just hits a lot of notes for me and you know, I I know that it's not the best movie ever, but it is my favorite movie. Um, so I, I I can you know criticize it without you know rose tinted glasses or whatever. Um, but another movie that I've always loved and will always watch and with just awe and spectacle is like Terminator Two. Uh, it's just this fantastic movie visually, beautiful, uh, a lot of great characters, great storylines, super still relevant. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was just the king back then. Uh, really couldn't do any wrong for my young 
child eyes, I guess, but the movie's still an incredible movie, um, uh, regardless. And then, uh, just kind of another MCU pick, not necessarily a, a number three for me, but I still really love, uh, Captain America, the winter soldier, uh, uh one of the best MCU movies, if not the best one. Uh, incredible storyline, big stakes to it. Um, introduced a lot of good characters and just a lot of uh, important th- themes going on, on with that movie. And it's just, just you know, Kevin Feige and uh, the MCU just knocking one out of the park. Yeah, excellent. I think uh, I'll get into my movies later, but it's funny, you know, you and I have two of the same favorite movies in our top three are, or just the movies that we really connect with, but kind of introduce myself as far as, you know, I'm Salim Soderwala again and how I really got into comic books, like reading comic books a lot as a kid. Um, you know, I was, I, I never really read in general when I was, I was young. Uh, I was always kind of forced to read outside of school stuff. Like, you know, yeah, you have to read for school. That's different, but kind of making you kind of read in the, in the summer and things like that. And, you know, you go into the library, library, I should say. Uh, my parents would take me there. You know, I would go there with my cousins, my sisters. And walking through, you know, trying to pick up books, I, I noticed they had a comic book section. Um, and I don't know if, Carl, like I said, if you remembered the comic books, like from like the old ones, especially like the, from like the 40s, 60s, Marvel had this essentials of mm-hmm. like the series for each, like for Spider-Man, Captain America, Avengers, and Thor, and all of the Ant-Man, and all of them. They had the essentials. So my local library had a bunch of this. The ones they had the most of was Spider-Man. So now I did reach a lot more Spider-Man than I did uh, all the other ones. But that's how I really got hooked into it. And I, I couldn't stop reading comic books, Um you know, looking, watching different movies, like really sci-fi related stuff, I would always really get more intrigued on the sci-fi side as opposed to really anything. Um, and that that's a, that's how that's my passion grew for, for comics and, and for sci-fi and, and related um, movies and TV shows in general. And not to kind of get into my top three favorite movies, uh, like I said, two of them are <laughs> the same ones that are on your list. Uh, one being Terminator 2. I mean, like, I 100% agree with you. That movie still holds up. It's still, like, funny when we watch, um, when we see anything happen, like, with, you know, animatronics and people building robots. It's like, there's a movie about this. They shouldn't be doing this, you know, as a joke. But it's it's funny. But it's it, that movie, like, it, it's one of the most, like, you know, like, perfect movies that, that were ever created. And I, I wish... You know, we, we talked about it. Like, I wish they, they had done more with it. Um, obviously, they've made a few more movies. But, yeah, yeah th- that was that's definitely hands on one of my favorite all time. Uh, the second one, I'll say not only my favorite MCU movie, but like just like one of my favorite movies. And I 100 percent agree with you is Captain America Winter Soldier. Yeah, that hit on everything. I was I was always intrigued by how they would approach that storyline just because they would have to adjust on how they introduced Bucky back into the equation, um, how they would go about that. And I thought it was perfect. Like to this day, I don't think there's an MC movie that'll get released that'll beat that for me. Like it was perfect from the start to, to, to the end. Uh, everything about like you, what Captain America is, like more and more you find out in that movie yeah. who he is, like everything about like his character and everything like that. that. That's like one of my favorite aspects of it as well. And then the last movie I'll say I really um, love and the thought of uh, is The Matrix. The Matrix I really love because it's always been one of my fascinations. You know, what people always ask, you know, it's it's funny and, 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 and it's kind of joking way too in my mind, but like wh- where we come from and things like that. And it's I always wonder like, like, what if we are a simulation? <laughs> like, <laughs> what if, like, you know, some someone created a program and, you know, this program is just, that's what's controlling us all. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, it's half joking, but, like, it's just funny. And uh, the movie itself was just, you know, phenomenal. Like, um, I remember, not, not to get too far off the, the, uh, the topic, I mean, it's kind of related, but I remember reading that, Will Smith had originally been approached to do 
the Matrix. And okay. And I guess he he read the storyline and he was like, "This is weird. I don't know about this." And he decided to do uh, Wild Wild West instead. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if he knew knew that, but no, I didn't. But yeah, he he decided to do Wild Wild West and and forego the Matrix. And obviously, Wild Wild West was a major flop. Yeah. And I guess you think about it, it's like I, we don't know the Matrix other than Keanu Reeves as the lead character. I do wonder how how it would have been if it would have been the same success with Will Smith. Obviously, Will Smith is a very charismatic actor, um, charismatic person, celebrity wise, and everything. So I think they would have still made it work, but it definitely would have been a much different, um, I feel like, feel to the movie. I think. So yeah, th- those are my top three as far as the as the movies are concerned for me. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think we have a really good show for a show going into our um, what we want to talk about today. Hawkeye was recently released a trailer. It's been a few weeks now, but that's going to be MCU's next uh, big show that is coming out in December. I know they have a couple of movies coming out as well. Uh, one of being the uh, Spider-Man uh, Far From uh, Far From Home. Uh, yeah, no Far From Home. No way, no way home. Home. Yeah, yeah. No way home. No way I, home. I always, I always do that too. Yeah, I always <laughs> try to remember because I know they had homecoming. Then it was far from home. Then no way home. They they have that home, uh, you know, theme thing going on with that. But yeah, so that's coming out in December. But also Hawkeye will be coming out, and I think there's a lot to with even with the first trailer. There's a lot to kind of dive into, and kind of learn. So uh, we'll go ahead and play the first trailer right now for those that maybe have not seen it yet. This is the first Christmas we've had together in years. I love you guys. I'm making up for some lost time. Authorities are wondering if the masked vigilante who terrorized the city's underworld is back. The past is caught up with me. Should we be worried? No, no, it's nothing. I'll be home for Christmas. I promise. When I wore this suit, I made a whole lot of enemies. You're a Hawkeye. Who the hell are you? Some people have actually called me the world's greatest archer. Are you one of those people? It's the most wonderful. Hey, babe, I should be back in a day or two. Hang on a second. With the kids jingle bell Things have gotten more complicated. This is too dangerous. Definitely not this one. You'll have to say definitely like that. Christmas. Yeah, so that was a great first trailer. I thought at that, like it gave a lot of good little tidbits that we could really go through. Um, now we're we're just gonna go through each character and kind of talk about like what we saw in the, in the in the trailer. But before we get into that, I do want to mention. Obviously, MCU doesn't generally take from one exact storyline when they're when they're creating. Uh, the shows or movies or whatever they do, but this this one looks like it's supposed to be from like loosely based on uh, one of the run comic books uh, run run of series by Matt Fraction and David Aha called Hawkeye. As you can see, the picture that we put up on the, on screen, um, it might be worthwhile checking out. You can, you can it's like a twenty two series issue um, or issue series, I should say, but. Uh, that has the entirety of it. It's they kind of made it into a graphic novel, like a hard cover set. So it's the entire 22 series you can get on Amazon, I believe. And I'm sure you can find it at like Barnes and Nobles or whatever uh, you go to. And 
or even your local comic book shop, they might have it as well. But it might be worthwhile checking out before December. It's it's a good it's a good series. Um, I think it really dug into Hawkeye the character um, and Clint Barton in, in general. So it be it could be worth checking out for those uh, that are interested. But yeah, l- l- let's transition here into the the each character that like we know will be in the series and that we saw in this trailer itself. Now, technically, she's wasn't in this trailer. We know she's part of the story. Uh, Laura Barton, uh, played by Linda Cardinelli. It doesn't look like she was in the first trailer, like I said, but he does seem to talk to her on the phone. Now, I I don't know how that'll play into it, too. I don't know how much they're going to show his family uh, because I think this happens probably right after Endgame, like right after Endgame, like when they finally come back after the blip when uh, they reverse with Th- Thanos dead, mm-hmm. uh, Tan- Thanos dead. So I think that's when it's really set into it. So uh, what were your thoughts on that as far as um, his family potentially being in this uh, trailer as far as far as what they'll do and how much of his family they'll show and more into that side of his storyline? Well, we do see his oldest daughter um, and a lot of people going into it, especially before this Kate Bishop reveal, which we'll talk more about her um, in a bit. But we going into what was it? Uh, oh, the Infinity, Infinity Wars. Infinity Wars. Yeah, I don't yeah. know why I couldn't think of that. Uh, but just seeing those scenes with uh, Hawkeye training her and calling her Hawkeye, like, oh, is she going to be the Kate Bishop of the MCU? And we're not going to actually have. Kate Bishop, but no, we are. So those are two separate characters. Um, but we, you know, she's there. Uh, we don't know what kind of role or how important his daughter and the rest of his family are going to be. Obviously, they're not going to be, you know, main center of attention. Uh, and like you said, his wife is around. So it is confirmed that she's alive. She's not dead or anything. Uh, he talks to her on the phone. So we don't know if it's just a conflict of uh, schedules with the actress or if she quits or they just couldn't book her, you know, COVID complications, whatever. It could be a, a number of things, but right now we don't see her in the, the trailer. So she may not be in the series whatsoever. And I don't, I don't think the actress has said anything about it either. So we'll, we'll see uh, again, but you know, they're, they're alive and well, so we don't need to necessarily concern ourselves too much about, the family. Oh, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And I, you, you did mention obviously Kate Bishop. Um, we thought maybe you know his, instead of having Kate Bishop, they would have his daughter take the mantle because they did, like you said, they teased it in Endgame when they showed like his family disappearing, yeah. um, him sh- him shooting the archery, ar- doing archery practice with his daughter. Uh, but yeah, let, let's talk about Kate Bishop. She she is. Um, Played by Haley Stantonfield, and uh, and in the comics, Kate Bishop is uh, eventually who takes up the Hawkeye mantle. Uh, Kate is Hawkeye's big biggest fan, and has modeled his like ent- her entire like everything around him as like the world's greatest archer uh, is concerned, and and that's what she is supposed to be. Obviously, we'll later get into a little bit more of like we're part of the Young Avengers, but. Yeah, so Kate is going to be it's going to be kind of like a a relationship building basically between Clint and Kate and throughout this whole series as they get to know each other. Um what are your initial thoughts on how you think that they will approach with Kate and I would also ask like in the comics how much did you know about Kate Bishop? Um well, I know what this uh the series is is like you said is is going to involve a lot of this uh the comic book run that we talked about with the, the Matt Fraction run, um, which deals a lot with both Clint and Kate. And Kate's origin has a lot of mob influence in in, in there. So this will have the that type of storyline be involved, like to go into her backstory and we'll know more about her family and what's going on uh, with that character. Uh, but she, like you said, she's very much influenced by Clint and, uh, trying to to fill in his shoes, and in the comics, she really did actually take that mantle of Hawkeye, and it wasn't something. Take is actually a bad word. Uh, he gave it to her officially. He calls her Hawkeye, so it's uh, 
There's another example of that in the comic books too, just real quick. There's actually two Wolverines. There's right. Logan. We know Wolverine as Wolverine, but then uh, there's Laura um, Kenny. Kenny or X-23 right. as some people, but um, he gave her the title of Wolverine. So she's officially Wolverine in the comics and there's just two Wolverines and there's two Hawkeyes. It's just, you know, and there's also two Spider-Mans There's miles Morales. There's Peter Parker. So it's not like um, one is going to replace eventually. Sure. But it's not like Clint dies. We shouldn't expect that at least at the end of the series. If, if that's, what anyone is going to go with, but uh, I don't really know a ton about ha- um, uh, Kate Bishop, other than that she's a part of this. Uh, she like was a part of the Young Avengers team. It's not really a uh, a big team right now. They'll probably bring it back in the comic books eventually. But uh, she was a part of the Young Avengers team uh, with a bunch of other characters. Yeah, and and the, let's talk a little bit about the Young Avengers before we move on here, but. The Young Avengers will slowly are being introduced. I mean, you know, you already saw uh, that they introduced Billy and Tommy, who are aka known as Wiccan and Speed uh, from WandaVision. Um, if you, although if you want to throw up that picture of them, so yeah, they show them in, in WandaVision, introduce them um, being part of that. They're eventually, by, I'm assuming, going to be brought back uh, to be part of the Young Avengers. Um, and then they had Elijah Bradley who plays the Patriot. He was introduced in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, kind of just kind of throwing in kind of that seed uh, to going forward. And then uh, in Loki, they introduced Kid Loki uh, when he went into like that one weird area um, out, off, out, out, outside of like the timeline. Uh, they introduced Kid Loki. Uh, that could be a factor as well. And then America Chavez will debut in uh, Doctor Strange. They haven't introduced her yet, obviously, but uh, she will be uh, in the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, um, uh, played by. uh, Do you know how to pronounce her name? I I have. I believe it's Sochi Gomez. Sochi Gomez. Okay, and yeah, uh, yeah. and then um, obviously the other characters. I think they'll be introduced later on as well. Are like Ms. Marvel. Uh, Kamala Khan will be played by Iman Vellani uh, in the upcoming Miss Marvel's Disney uh, Plus series. I think they're going to have that. So, like slowly but surely, they're going to get that um, Young Avengers crew. And I, you know, for the funny thing, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on this. Um, Peter, so right now, Peter Parker is essentially that age <laughs> where the because mm-hmm. like when when the Young Avengers come out, come out in the comics, Peter is in his 20s by then right yeah late in his mid to later 20s uh but right now the mcu because of the blip um the like that five years went by he's still a high school kid so i'm one thing i'm curious is what they do with peter as far as how old they'll make him are they gonna fast forward him to be college age here pretty soon Mm -hmm. um or being past college uh i don't think so I mean, I mean, like with with the new movie, I believe if it's not um, like the entire movie, like at some point in the movie, about a year will pass from No Way Home, from Far From Home to No Way Home. So I I believe that's what I heard is going to be about a year after that, but it's still going to be hard to place exactly when um like how it relates to dr strange and what how it falls in the timeline and then even this hawkeye series like like once we finally see the hawkeye series we know it's obviously around christmas season so it just kind of depends is was the blip did the in in game did that happen like over the summer and this is the same year is it the next year 2024 uh like once we get like a a good concrete uh like year on there hopefully they tell us uh, that would be really nice just like the first episode it is december 22nd 2023 that would be awesome so we can just right, say okay right. <laughs> now we know is this is happening here and this is happening here because it's a lot of confusion based off of that no 100 and i know that's kind of going a little off topic but it just it's something i've been thinking about and i wanted to get your pick your brain on that. It's just kind of funny because like I said, when you're, you're talking about young Avengers and Peter Parker is 
still only a high school kid, so he technically would qualify to be a young Avenger. But he, and obviously, in the comic book world, the young mm-hmm. Avengers came out much later when Peter was already much older. But, yeah, I like how, uh, like, yeah. and I like how they did that in um in uh, Far From Home, where they had that one kid that didn't get blipped, that he was like a high school kid or right. like middle school kid or whatever, and he didn't get blipped in this five years later, and he's like chiseled out man <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly they, they did do that that was funny but yeah so moving on to, into the into the trailer a little bit more um the I, it looks like what part of the storyline that's going to be centered about this show about the show is when you when they go into when they go back to uh an end game to to go get clint Um, they're showing him as he's going on this like killing spree of underground like mobsters and like the Yakuza and all these different gang mafias. Um, And his, he basically becomes this character called Ronan. Um, And he takes up that and he, he's, and they kind of then don't really mention anything about Ronan, right? They kind of just drop it. So that's obviously pretty important. He's probably pissed off a lot of people and they can't just forget that, happen right mm-hmm. so it looks like they're bringing that back here and that's going to be kind of uh centered it seems like um and potentially it looks kind of like maybe kate bishop was taking back the ronin well bringing ronin back up i kind of had a different theory too which we'll get into but yeah just your thoughts on how you see that the uh, kate bishop with the ronin and him obviously the, the storyline of uh, him getting back into facing the consequences of his of his actions in the past. Well, let's see, um, like in the trailer, like there is a Ronin character dressed up and taking on the gangs and the mobs and stuff. And for me, like there's a scene where I believe he's taking off the mask and it's Kate and he's like, oh, you're a Hawkeye. So I believe it's Kate she's not only like we've been saying uh she idolizes him so i think she knew or at least maybe found out that he was ronin and she just decided to wear that costume and do the same thing and take out mobsters and stuff because like i said her origins is that uh very heavily tied to gangs and stuff so she's probably maybe trying to take revenge on what they might have done to her family or something like that. Um, being undercover and doing the same things that Hawkeye, uh, that Clint did. Um, at least that's my theory. I don't you know until we find out in about a month from now, we'll see. But uh, that's what I think. Um, but then there's also Hawkeye, or should I say Clint wasn't the only e- Echo, or excuse me, Clint wasn't the only... Um, Ronan in the comic book series, once he dropped that mantle, another character named Echo picked up that mantle and became the new uh, the new Ronan. Uh, so this is Echo, and this is her when she was Ronan. This was like pretty much a couple issues after Clint dropped that mantle. So we're going to see Echo, and she's actually going to be a main or at least a big antagonist for this series. Uh, but I don't know exactly if she is the biggest villain or the the main antagonist of the series, but she is going to be here and she's actually going to play a pretty big role in the Marvel universe, the, the MCU going forward for quite a while. So we're going to see a lot of this character. Yeah. So I, I actually think, I know they kind of show Kate Bishop potentially looking like she might be Ronan, but I, I'm wondering if it's more so like, this Ronin character starts, you know, going back on the killing sprees again. And because Kate Bishop is such a big Hawkeye fan and she knew Hawkeye was doing that. So she tries to go find out uh, Clint. And then Clint is also trying to go find, you know, who Ronin is, who's doing these things, who's bringing it back up from his past. And that's kind of coming back to haunt him. And I think it's actually going to be uh, Maya Lopez, um, who the the actor who's going to be playing Maya Lopez is actually Aliqua Cox, um, and to kind of give a, a background on Echo, like her her uh, abilities in the comics, she's like an Olympic level athlete, 
concert level pianist kind of gives you kind of you know her intelligence as well kind of a, a really strong martial artist you know, highly skilled acrobatic gifted ballerina again kind of shows her athletic ability and her her intel, um, intellectualism um very photographic reflexes similar to um i want to say similar to God, I can't remember the name. Just she, they showed the character in the uh, a Black Widow, uh, the uh, Taskmaster. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar to that, where he she can mimic everything, uh, fighting skills, everything that you do. She can she can do as well. And I know she was also kind of a uh, Daredevil character. Um, she because she is the adopted daughter of the Kingpin, and the Kingpin and the Daredevil are like the two main. Like the Daredevil uh, main nemesis is Kingpin, so I know she comes up in that um, a- aspect as well. And um, a- another interesting thing about her, she is um, she's deaf in the comic books, mm-hmm. um, and will be interesting as well. This is connection to Clint because they never they never talk about this yet in the in the MCU, but I think they hint it in. The see in this trailer because when you see a sideway view of Clint, you see a, a hearing aid in his ear. Um, and Clint, yeah, Clint Barton in the comics is hard of hearing, so mm-hmm. he has a hearing aid, which is kind of kind of plays into you know, he he can't hear, but his his vision is you know, s- superb, absolutely. He, he's like, you know, he can't miss a vision, so that's going to be interesting as well, I think, if they. Uh, pull that in, and I think it, it's interesting. Like I said, I I feel like she might, she might be actually Ronan in this, um, in, in the in the show. And a fun fact, which you mentioned, um, Echo is deaf, just like Daredevil is blind. Uh, the actress playing Echo is also deaf. She is a deaf actress, so they actually like they went all the way. Nice uh, yeah. for that one. So that's a really cool thing. Um, speaking of also Daredevil, uh, which I just learned like literally right before the show, like I said, we're going to see a lot of Echo going forward. Um, we're going to see a lot more of Daredevil related characters, if not Daredevil and Kingpin specifically um, in the MCU pretty soon, if not in right. the series. And so uh, this is kind of the way of them bridging the gap, not just for the Young Avengers, but bringing us back to those good old Netflix Marvel days. And uh, we'll, right, we'll right. see we'll see some of those guys pop up. I don't know necessarily in this series, but uh, it is already rumored that we're going to have an Echo Disney Plus series too, and at some point in the future, but we'll get to see more of the Daredevil stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited now because I learned about that today. No, exactly. And the rumor was that uh, Daredevil, maybe maybe not Daredevil himself, like, but Matt Murdock, um, uh, was Charlie Cox, I believe. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, he's supposed to be in as Matt Murdock in, um, again, I can't. Spider-Man, yeah, from, the, uh, no way home. No way home. Sorry, I don't know why I keep doing that. I have no clue <laughs> why. And then the funny thing is, that, like, No Way Home is like the movie that I'm most excited about too. So. But yeah, he's supposed to be in it supposedly as Matt Murdock as representing uh, Peter Parker as his lawyer supposedly. So we'll see. That was rumored. It was never confirmed. Um, I know there's a lot of things going on with that movie that's been rumored but not confirmed. But things are slowly starting to leak. We'll see if that happens as well. But I know they're supposed to bring Charlie Cox back as the Daredevil. Um, so that's again ties in with Echo and if. She, you know, if they do the show, maybe maybe uh, Charlie Cox will be in the Echo series as well. We'll see what happens mm-hmm. with that. But yeah, that kind of you know talk about Ronan and and Maya Lopez and Echo. And then moving on, um, another character we see in here is Kate's mom, Eleanor Bishop. Um, in the comics, Eleanor was like the matriarch of the very wealthy uh, like family. Um, she's kind of, she's kind of like a villain in the comic, like not like not like a like super villain per se, but she's kind of 
I think someone that's not exactly on the up and up. So I feel like uh, so they they have Vera from for Mega uh, playing her, but yeah, she's supposed to be basically an an an, an antagonist in general, not necessarily someone that um, that's going to be like you know a, a, a good character, but it'll be it'll, it'll be an important character for sure. I'm not mm-hmm. sure how considering who they got to play her, I'd imagine she's going to be in the show a big part of the show i don't think they would get us someone like vera uh for mega who uh who's very you know in her all right she's done pretty well in her career um so i would imagine that they'll you know go far into that as far as uh her relationship the mom and the mom and daughter relationship and they'll probably set up more um you know other storylines going forward with that and then the the people that like Kate and uh, Clinton, all these will have conflicts with um, are the tracksuit Draculas. They're a mafia gang. Uh, I think they might be the bad guys. I think there's a scene in the trailer you see them kind of holding them up and having the having them in the in a trailer. And I think they could probably be the the main um, like people that they're kind of fighting with and I don't know who if they'll be teaming up with anyone and how everything will work about but I think that's going to be a they're going to be a big part of it as well like I, I don't think there's going to be like uh um them being the driving force it could be just like dry, the jobbers or say you know you know the guys that got to get beat up there's no Ultron bots there's no uh right. you know no Shatari or anything like that these are the guys that are kind of get smacked around by Kate and, and Clint. So um, in general, now they could represent either they are the Magia, which is a, a prime group in Marvel comic books, or they're just going to replace the Magia and be the tracks of Dracula's. Yeah, I don't, I don't know exact details of that Matt Fraction run, but I'm pretty sure they're, they're in there. Um, but in, in general, there will be a bunch of dudes and tracks who's getting blown up and shot at by arrows. Right. And I think they're they're one of the big parts of that Hawkeye series, um, and, and throughout that comic series, they're part of it. So I know they hire like different guys to kind of take out Barton, um, and like the re- like the leader. There's like a big co- conflict between him and Barton as well. So yeah, that'll be interesting as far as how how they, they develop that angle as well. And the last thing I want to talk to you about it. It might be nothing. It might be something. I, I, I'm I'm very intrigued about it in general because I'm I'm intrigued to see how they bring back this big character that's obviously part of MCU. Um, they they show the Rogers the musical. Um, mm-hmm. It's interesting that they don't call it Captain America but just Rogers, and obviously due to Sam Wilson taking up the mantle of of Captain America because Captain America Four was announced. And obviously, Sam Wilson is going to be Captain America in there. Um, but like I said, I, I find it interesting they just they call it Rogers, the, you know, and not Captain America. And I and I, I'm very intrigued to see how they bring back Steve Rogers because we know that Steve Rogers is still alive. He they, he they, he didn't die. They, mm-hmm. they, and, and and the end of Endgame, obviously, we see Tony Stark dying because he gives up his life to save everyone to bring everyone back. Has a funeral. Right snap. Yeah, has a funeral, obviously. Yeah. But Steve Rogers obviously goes off into a different timeline, and he may have created other conflicts because of going back and creating another timeline of events and things like that. Um, and then you see him back as an old man, um, but we know he's alive and well. He didn't. He, he was old, but he didn't look like he was like on his deathbed old, right? Mm-hmm. Like he. He was like maybe what like seventies, but he still was pretty spry uh, for his age. Like he still looked like he was very well and health wise, he was like you know um, doing what he he you would think he'd be doing fine, and he maybe like just living somewhere and uh, just doing something. So it'll be interesting if uh, what they'll do with, with with Captain America or not Captain America, it's just Steve Rogers, because there was that rumor that Chris Evans was supposed to be coming back that leaked and then Chris Evans squashed it supposedly. But I know some, a lot of times MCU uh, likes to 
you know, try to play, you know, coy when mm-hmm. things do leak. Um, because, the, like, for example, the other spider man being in no, uh, you know, No Way Home, um, that leaked, like, well, like, over, a year, like, a year and a half ago, I want to say, right? Yeah. That they were going to probably be back. And there's going to be something like a multiverse type of thing happening. And obviously, they kept denying, kept denying. And now we see, like, the villains are in it. So obviously, more than likely, you're going to see the other Peter Parkers played by Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield that are going to probably be in this movie as well. So it's interesting how I want to, I'm, I'm curious to see how they handle it. Like, will they go back? Will they have Chris? Uh, Evans as an old man, Steve Rogers, just appear uh, in a scene somewhere? Or will they go back and get Steve Rogers when he decided to go in the 40s to live his life with Agent Linda Carter and get him back because he created some kind of chaotic timeline? Like, what what are your thoughts on it? Do you think that the Rogers, the musical, is just kind of like an Easter egg just for fun? Or do you think there's yeah. going to be implications? I think it's I think it's just a fun Easter egg. I mean, because if there was going to be a place to address this, it would probably would have been best to do it in Falcon and Winter Soldier, and they already did. I mean, they had that joke where he's like on the moon or whatever. Um, but I think if you're going to address something as big as Captain America's future status, you would handle it on a Captain America platform. So it would have been Falcon and Winter Soldier or in the next Captain America movie. I mean, I think this is just fun. I mean, obviously we we've done so much um like praising and uh of adoration of Iron Man postpartum in all of these other movies like Far From Home, uh having connections and then having connections in Shang-Chi and so on, just talking about him and all the things he's been doing and setting up. But there hasn't really been any discussion about about cap other than the little mention in um uh, in falcon Winter soldier so i think this is just like kind of them making around so, okay let's talk about cap now let's you know praise him because we, we we you know he was great just just as great as tony so uh we need to make sure that everyone in the world is not just talking about tony stark this tony stark that let's have some more cap stuff go about in the universe that's that's how i feel about it that's fair i you know i guess i'll I'll say this though like in bringing up captain or steve rogers i should say more so in cap uh and falcon and winter soldier i don't know if they would do that because i think they were trying very hard to transition Mm -hmm. sam wilson as captain america so obviously they don't want to bring steve rogers into it and Captain America 4, I don't think they'll do that yet either. Simply, maybe like a teaser at like a post-credit teaser. Yeah, he'll definitely be a, talked about. Talked like, about or, or like a post-credit teaser, like yeah. he'll appear or something. But I think they really want to, you know, hammer in like Sam Wilson is Captain America now. Like right. they want, that's what they want to do. So, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm always intrigued by these little things. Obviously, I'm, I wouldn't be a nerd if I wasn't intrigued by these like uh different um possibilities that they could go with it and um we'll we'll eventually get into like phase four and how that's going and get our thoughts on that as as in future episodes um and i think next week we'll talk a little bit about venom too because i think we'll both have watched it by then so we'll give our thoughts on venom too as well but Oh uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it for today's episode. Did you have any final thoughts that you wanted to get off? Um, just lastly, uh, we have to keep in mind real quick uh, the Black Widow, uh, Yelena Belova, that that's teaser right, at right. the end of uh, the Black Widow, and uh, somewhat teaser in the Falcon and Winter Soldier with the um, I can never remember her name, Contessa name, but yeah, that yeah. just that we're gonna probably see uh black widow in this as well she could be part of that antagonist group as well so uh who knows maybe she's the one that hired um i highly i highly doubt she would hire echo but she's probably gonna show up at some point and just be a foil somewhere in there 
Yeah, she is actually. It's funny. I I totally forgot to talk about her, but she is in this in the show. And like you said, she was a uh, uh, contessa played by uh, Julie Julia D- uh, Dreyfus. Um, she tells her that Clint Barton was who killed his, right. her sister, which obviously is only the half truth. I mean, yeah, technically, but there was a reason why it had to happen. You know, there, she, she kind of leaves. So like that's that Contessa character. I don't know a lot about her. I'm going to, I'm going to learn more about her too here, but she, she's trying to mix things up here and try to create some chaos where there's, there's a need to like, what are her motives? Like, you yeah, and I do wonder it. like how, how much of the public knows about exactly what happened with Thanos and Vormir. Yeah. And- and the stones, like they know the blip happened. They know people died. He came back. The Avengers saved the day. You know, Iron Man died. Caps retired. But like, do they know how much do they know these details about all these other worlds and all the other circumstances and things like that? Do they? They probably don't. And that's where that that gray area is where Contessa can fit in and say, you know, Hawkeye killed Natasha. Stuff and stuff like that can just they can just go anywhere with it. No, 100%. Yeah, it'll be, like I said, it'll be interesting uh, to see. And I'm, I'm sure as we get closer to December, we'll find out more about the show itself and um, maybe another trailer will leak that we'll see some other scenes. But yeah, that's that's a wrap for today's episode. I really appreciate everyone tuning in. Uh, please follow up me at Science Fliction. You can see my tag on there. Follow Carl at Ninja Chortles. Uh, tweet us about the show, what your thoughts might be. If, if you're excited about watching Hawkeye, uh, what your top three favorite sci-fi movies might be. Um, and yeah, just uh, ha- have any questions or discussions with us if you like. But uh, till next time, uh, Science Fiction fans. See ya.